This is Animal Magnetism by Elizabeth Inchbald, read by Timothy Hurley. Act 2. Another Apartment at the Doctor's. Enter Constance and Lisette. I overheard it all, and he has given your guardian the wand, in which you heard him say the magnet was contained. And while he keeps it, it is to magnetize you and force you to love him in spite of yourself. All this agrees with the letter he has given me from his master, in which the Marquis informs me by what accident that letter my guardian sent to the doctor, who possesses magnetism, fell into his hands, and immediately gave him the idea of disguising his valet and sending him hither, under the name of that very doctor. But where is Lafleur now? Just left your guardian, and gone home to bring the patient you heard him speak of and I would lay a wager that very patient is no other than the Marquis himself. But for what end is all this? That they have planned. You may depend upon it. For the present, you have nothing to do but to pretend an affection for your guardian. It will be difficult to feign a passion my heart revolts at. Never fear your good acting. Besides, I will take equal share in it. How? You? I'll fall in love with the doctor as well as you. If the magnetism affects you, why not have the same power over me? And if it makes you love him, it shall make me adore him. Hush, here he comes. Enter the doctor with the wand in his hand. What he has told me seems so very surprising that nothing but proof can thoroughly convince me. And now for the proof. He ogles you, cast a tender look, and accompany it with a sigh. Alas. My dear Constance, my lovely ward, what makes you sigh? Weariness of your confinement, I suppose. Ah, sir. Come, come, I confess, the restraint you have been under has been too much, and I am not surprised you have taken a dislike to me. A dislike to you? Ah, sir. Oh, guardian. I believe it will do. Come, come, Constance, do not sigh and make yourself so uneasy. You shall not live many weeks thus retired, for I am thinking of marrying you very soon to a fine young gentleman. What did you say? If I have the good fortune to be beloved by you, let me have the happiness to hear it from yourself. Yes, cruel man. Some invincible power compels me, in spite of my resistance. Yes, I love you. And I adore you. What? You too? I did not expect that. No, mine is not merely a love but a rage, a violence, a dote to distraction, love you to the loss of health, of spirits, of rest, and life. If you do not take pity on the passion which burns in my heart, if you can be regardless of the flames which consume me, can you be insensible of my tender pleadings? Take care how you turn my affection to hatred. What a terrible situation I have got myself into. This effect of the magnetism is very natural. It acts upon one as well as another. But Lisette's love is very troublesome. I'll call Geoffrey in and give up part of my power to him. He shall take the wand for a few minutes and charm Lisette. Why do you thus turn from me? Is this the return my love demands? But be not uneasy. Death shall deliver you from an object whose passions you despise. Oh, that you could but read what is written in my heart. Ah, sir. Behold the state to which you have reduced a poor innocent. If I am treated with kindness, I am naturally soft, gentle, and tender. But if I am neglected, by all that's great and precious, I will do some strange thing, either to you or to my rival. This Lisette is so furious, she makes me tremble. I must put an end to her affection. Geoffrey? Enter Geoffrey. Here, sir. What do you want with me? Take this, and carry it to my study. Yes, sir, directly. Stop a moment, Geoffrey. Stop a moment. Two or three moments, if you please. Now we shall see what effect it has. I see through his designs. Let us both fall in love with Geoffrey. With all my heart. Well, Geoffrey, and... and... how do you do, Geoffrey? Pretty well, considering my leg, where the dog bit me, and considering I can only see with one eye. But even that misfortune does not prevent your looking very agreeably, Geoffrey. It succeeds. She's taken. What? You are beginning to laugh at me again. Laugh at you? No, Geoffrey. I now wonder how it was possible I should ever laugh at you. How becoming is that bandage? And the eye we do see has a thousand times more bewitching charms for the absence of that we do not. Very well. It does very well. What a happy stratagem was this. Dear madam, 
only observe him. Alas, Lisette, don't imagine I am any more than you, blind to the perfections of Geoffrey. Ha! What? In short, I must confess, Geoffrey appears to me this moment the most captivating object I ever beheld. Ha ha ha. This is as bad as the other. I think the mad dog has bit us all. Is it possible you can love Geoffrey? No, no, your flation forbids it. Take, take my master. I resign him to you. No, I resign him to you. I will not have him. This is a very disagreeable situation. Geoffrey, will you be deaf to my passion? Yes, I am sure he will prefer me. No, I won't. I have been in love with her this twelve months, and I'll make choice of her. Then what will become of me? I can bear this no longer. Give me that, and do you go and make up some medicines. Ah, oh, my dear Lisette, you have made me so happy. I must shake hands. Learn to behave with more reserve. Ecod, I think you have not behaved with much reserve. Did not you hang upon me and said you loved me? Love you? Behold my master, and do not imagine I can love any but him. No, who can love any but him? This is worse and worse. Where is the doctor? If he does not come and give me some relief, I am a ruined man. Geoffrey, see if that is him. Exit Geoffrey. I have no doubt but it is, and with him the young patient on whom I am to prove my skill. Constance and you, Lisette, leave the room for the present. Yes, if you will go with me. But how do you think it is possible for me to leave you? A feeling which I cannot explain. And one I cannot explain. But I am going to prescribe. And it is improper. Enter Lafleur, leading the Marquis. The doctor draws the chair. This, doctor, is your patient. This is the renowned physician from whom you are to expect a cure. He looks surprisingly well, considering how much he has suffered. That renders his case the more dangerous. I would rather a patient of mine should look ill and be in no danger than look well and be in imminent danger. To conceive the suffering I have undergone, a being must be first transformed. He must be me before he can conceive what I have felt. For months I have led this agonizing life. But I am told, doctor, you can put an end to my disorder. You have in your possession that which can give me ease. But by what science you are master of so great a power, I own, is beyond my comprehension. Dear sir, you know not half the resources in the art of medicine. Trust firmly that you are in the hands of persons well informed and well practiced. We know how to give Naturia Philippe. Dr. Mystery, do you use your authority with these females to leave us to ourselves? I can't go. Nor I. I believe it's very true. No, they can't go. No, the force of the attraction will not suffer them. What do you think of the power of magnetism now? It has double the power I desire, and I wish it not act upon Lisette. I hope the Marquis is not really ill. I will remedy that. Lafleur whispers to the doctor, while the Marquis makes signs of love to Constance. She gets near his chair. Now, attend to what I am going to do. I will turn the whole affection of the maid upon myself. I will be very much obliged to you. One word only. Will you be mine, should my scheme prove successful? What is it? I have not time to say, but answer me. Will you be mine? I will. Very well. Extremely well. This will do very well. And now, deliver me from her love as soon as you can. I must approach her, and tis done. Lafleur goes to Lisette, makes signs of magnetism, then in a whisper, I am in love with you. Feign you to be so with me. I am in earnest, without feigning. So much the better. It will appear the more natural. Lafleur returns to the doctor. It's done. Observe how she looks at me. During this, Constance and the Marquis are exchanging sighs. What an art! But I will yet show its power in a manner yet more astonishing. I was on the point of being married to my guardian. Is it possible? Distraction! That must never be. Oh, heavens! Look to the patient. One of his fits has seized him, but it's nothing. It will soon be over. Nay, do not hide yourself. 
Oh, that I could plunge this steel a hundred times in that detestable heart. Come on, monster, and acknowledge thy conqueror expiring under this hand. I'll go into the next room. It is me I believe he has a desire to kill. But he has no weapon. Don't be afraid. Ah, uh, dear sir, relieve him from this terrible fit. Do, I beg you will. I cannot wholly relieve him at present, for you shall see me change the manner of his ravings. Behold my power. See, his countenance changes. His looks express tenderness now. It is no longer fury that transports him, but the lost languor of love now pervades his senses. Ah, charming Arpatia. Arpatia was the name of his first love. He fancies himself near to her. Isn't you then whom I behold? But alas, you do not suspect what I have suffered in your absence, and I only retain my life in the pleasing hope of one day passing it with you and rendering yours as happy as my own. What am I to think of this silence? You do not answer to my tender complaints. Ah, you hate me, you despise me, but dread the effects of this contempt. I feel what it is in my power to accomplish, and that I dare to accomplish all. He is going into his raving fit again. Pray, madam, speak to him, if it is only a word. Speak to him one word, if it is only one word. Your ward is afraid of disobliging you, but give her leave to speak to him, if it is but one word, only to be witness to a scene so novel. But, hark! Pshaw, pshaw, she looks at you for consent. Tell her she may say yes, just yes. But why suffer her to speak? Consider, you are in possession of the magnet, and that nothing can prevent the power of that charm. Ah, cruel! Ought I thus to wait for a word from those lips? You wish then to behold me die? Well, well, answer him yes. Do you love me? Yes. I'm transported. Hold, hold! This is a fit as painful to me as it is to you. Dear sir, let him alone. He may fall into his rage again. What thrilling transport rushes to my heart. All nature appears to me ravished, eyes more beautiful than poets ever formed her. Aurora dawns, the feathered songsters chant their most melodious strains, the gentle zephyr breathes its choicest perfumes, and the inspiring scene intoxicates my very soul. Come, change this fit into another. And you, who listen to me, partake my joy. Come and dwell with me under the shady branches of the river's side. Come, lovely shepherdess. Come, young shepherd. Mingle in the dance. Come, young shepherd. I can't dance. In vain you refuse. Press with gentle steps the mossy banks and join in rural pastime. Exeunt. End of the second act.